In this video, we're going to talk about assessment simulations. Okay, so this is the third video that I've done on all the all new Adobe Captivate software simulations. This video, we're specifically going to talk about assessment simulations. So the idea with simulations is that you can have three different types generally speaking of, of simulations. The first one being a demo where I show you what it is that you need to learn. The second type being a training simulation where you attempt to do it, you try it for yourself, you maybe make some mistakes and that's okay, you get to you know, just practice. And then the third type, which is what today's video is all about, is assessment simulations where think of this type of simulation as a final quiz. Let's get started. All right, so we're starting a brand new simulation. Uh, you could record both a demo, a training, and an assessment simulation simultaneously, but today we're just talking about assessment simulations, so that's what we're going to focus on here. I'm going to click on New Simulation, and this is going to open my capture screen or capture panel here. And the first thing we're going to do is go over to Preferences and select Modes. And we're going to check our assessment modes here. And we'll talk a little bit about the defaults that we're going to put into an assessment. No instructions. We're not providing them instructions. This is the final exam. So they should already know the steps and the stages and the procedures that they should be performing. What we're going to capture is we're going to capture click boxes on mouse clicks. We don't need a success caption. I still believe a failure caption is required even for assessments. We are going to limit the number of attempts because again, we don't want to just let them click randomly until they find the click box or you know type in random uh, entries into input fields until they find the right answer. We want to limit them. In other words, we don't want to award them points for trying just randomly to find the answer a uh, hundred times, right? So um, I'm going to be a little stricter in this case. I'm going to set the limits to one. I also think you should not show the hand cursor on click boxes because that kind of reveals where the click point is or where the click box is. If you change the cursor as you move over it, you're kind of revealing to your learner, you know, click here, obviously. So let's keep that turned off. Uh, now for input fields, we're automatically going to add input fields for text fields. Again, no success captions. Will show failure. And in this case, I'm going to leave this as two because maybe they type something incorrectly and we'll give them another chance to type it in properly. So I'm going to go ahead and save my mode preferences here. So that's all set up for assessment. And now we can go ahead and select our application window. I could go full screen if I want, or I could choose a custom size if I want, but I have just found that application window is the best choice for capturing any kind of software simulation because you can really focus on what it is that we're, we're teaching them and not all the um, bells and whistles of your operating system as well. So let's select, in this case, Google Chrome, and it comes up. Now, I'm not really capturing Google Chrome. I'm capturing a website. So in this drop down menu here, I'm going to select app region. And then I'm just going to click the website in, and not include any of the extra elements that are part of my browser. I'm not doing any narration because again, this is uh, an assessment. Even if it were a demo or training, I probably wouldn't record narration because I prefer to add the narration at the edit stage anyway. Uh, unless this was a simulation of something related to audio, I'm also not going to record system audio. It's not necessary. And I don't want, as I get close to the edge of this web page, I don't want the uh, application to uh, pan with me outside of the web page here. So we're going to make sure that no panning is selected here. I'm going to choose assessment and I'm going to unselect demo and we're good to get going here. So we're teaching people how to book a hotel 
for business travel for one for yourself for a member of the the organization that you work for so let's go ahead and record those steps don't stress out about the whole three two one thing because you can take your time performing these steps again i recommend following a script so you know exactly what you're doing as per the policies and procedures of your organization so let's choose going to you hear that little snapshot sound that it's capturing your screen now here's an interesting situation i'm going to type in washington and i'm concerned about that you'll hear some typing text there um, and we're going to say all of Washington, or maybe we should choose downtown Washington. Yeah, let's choose downtown Washington. And that, you know, would be something you capture in the instructions before you let people uh, perform the steps in this assessment. We'll say downtown Washington. All right, and it's for next week. So we're going to say from the 15th, to the 18th and we'll say done and again we'll change the number of travelers it's my wife isn't coming so <laughs> this is just me and we'll click done and now i'll press search you see i'm being very deliberate with the steps i'm performing okay i'm done this is all i want to capture for this assessment simulation press the end key on your keyboard to stop the recording process I can close my browser at this point and let's uh, expand this so that we can see everything in Captivate here. So essentially there are two kinds of slides you're going to end up with. The first kind of slide is this one here where we have a click box somewhere on your slide. I find it helpful to have your timeline open because that also makes it easy for you to tell what's happening on your screen here. Uh, if you wish, you can maybe drop down the zoom effect from up here so that you can see more of the slide all at once. But we know that we're working with a click box here. Now, unlike a training assessment, this is the answer to the first question, what is the first step that I need to perform? So we need to do a couple of things. Now, remember, we set up our preferences. So for the most part, those are all taken care of for us here. Uh, so first of all, you can see that I'm not showing the hand cursor on those clickable areas. It won't change my mouse cursor and reveal the answer. It's a single attempt only. I can override both of these things. That's not a problem. If I decide that this first step is more important, maybe we want to give them a couple of tries. The other thing you're going to want to do, obviously you saw me resize the click box to uh, fit the actual area that we need them to click. But we also want to turn on reporting because this is an assessment. This is the answer to our first quiz question, and that's what's the first step in this process. So we're going to include it in the quiz. We can assign whatever points that you decide is uh, fair for this particular step. Uh, I'm going to leave it at one. I think that's fine for a mouse click. And then we're going to add it to the total. So this will increase our score by one point if we get it correct. We're also going to, I recommend that you report to the LMS if you need to run interaction reports. So if you need to find out if uh, learners are clicking on the right, you know, which answers are they getting wrong or right, report to LMS is useful as well here. Now, when I click on this click box, there, it's basically an interaction. So let's click on the interactions here. If I click within the click box, in other words, if I get this answer correct, I'm going to go to the next slide, which is simulation slide number two. The other thing uh, that we can do last attempt, when we run out of tries, what do you want to have happen? Most likely it's going to be go to next slide as well, except they won't get any points for that. But you could actually build remediation into this where you take them back, where they can you know, go to an earlier point in the course where they learn what they should have learned in the first place. I'll leave that up to you, but that's sort of out of scope of today's tutorial. But we're just going to click on go to next slide there, and we'll click on done. 
So we have both situations covered in this case. We can move on to the second type of slide that you're gonna get with an assessment simulation. And that's this one here. And you can see that we've got an input field as well as the background of our slide here. So I'm gonna select this input field. It doesn't really look like the input field, but we can do a few things to modify it. First of all, we can resize it. Let's go back to the Visual Properties Inspector and we'll go down to Appearance. We'll select Large and maybe I'll make it a bold font so it's closer to what we're, we've got here. The shape has a border around it. I don't find that's necessary in this case, so I usually turn that off. And then we can move this to be right over top of uh, where they're gonna type in this case here. So with settings, you'll see input type and edit, right? I don't know what they're gonna type in. I typed in Washington with nothing else, but I could add other options too. Like I could type in Washington DC like this. I could add Washington D period C period. I could add D period C period, or I could add just DC. All of these would be valid, correct answers. So I'm gonna say, hey, type in any one of these, that's fine. I'm not marking people for spelling it correctly or whatever. And to that point as well, let me save these answer options and I'll just point out, make sure you unselect case sensitive because someone might type in, you know, all lower case letters, all uppercase letters or combination. Again, we don't want to make it difficult for them. Uh, basically, however the website would work, make sure your, your simulation works the same way. So if I could type it almost any different way on the website, make sure you cover those options here. Again, because it's text entry and a little bit more difficult, it's got two attempts there. Now, um, we want to show the captions, and this is something you can do with your click boxes as well and you may wish to edit them. So like in this case here, well actually you absolutely need to edit them because it's just gonna say enter failure text. So I'm gonna change this to incorrect. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'm gonna select uh, a different subheading here, subheading four for that one. And that way it's white text on the darker background. Again, similar here, I can do exactly the same thing. And we'll type in incorrect and we'll select our text tab here we'll go to the third item and subheading four that looks good to me so again you're going to repeat these steps until you have everything done let's go back to this input field and go into the uh, interactions inspector here so uh, when valid input is entered it's going to go to the next slide you also have an option to add what happens when invalid input is entered. So that could be a completely different action. The trigger is you have typed it wrong. The action is whatever you want it to do. Again, you could do remediation where you go to an earlier slide in your course, but most of us will probably just go to the next slide and not award them the points that they would otherwise earn for this correct, for this uh, input field here. Let's click done. That's taken care of. So you're going to repeat this for all of your slides. Probably most of your slides will be in uh, click boxes like this one here. And periodically you'll have input fields, but it depends on what you're capturing, of course. Uh, so repeat that, make sure everything works, preview your project, test it out, see if it works as expected. And if you need this assessment to be included in another Adobe Captivate project, select your first slide, go all the way down to the last slide of your assessment simulation. Uh, do not select the results slide, just the one before it here. I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on slide 13. And then from edit, I can copy those slides, open my other Captivate project up, and paste them in at the appropriate spot. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs.
visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.